All right, this is Flatfish video script, take one. You've probably seen a flatfish before, or at least you've heard of Flounder from The Little Mermaid, who is definitely not a flounder, just saying. Flatfish aren't hard to mistake. One of their main characteristics is having an asymmetrical body plan, with two eyes on one side of their body and no eyes on the other side. And they don't start out that way. As they grow from a tiny larval fish floating in the ocean, an eye on one side of the body slowly begins to migrate over to the other side, turning the fish over. With such an obviously unique body plan, you might also assume that all flatfish are all related to each other in one big happy family. And, well, that may not be the case. There are scientists who spend their entire career studying the relationships of organisms to each other and they use the cladograms you might have made in high school biology class. To review, these cladograms basically show the relationships between different organisms and whether they share common ancestors. This is where we get the tree of life, but scientists usually work on a much narrower scale. The way that scientists have approached cladograms has been by looking at morphological or physical traits. One fish may have fancy fins, while more distant relatives may have less fancy fins. This is relatively easy, and scientists have been doing this for hundreds of years. This technique can be problematic though. Take a look at these two fish. They have different color patterns, so they should be two different species, right? But as it turns out, these are the same species. All organisms have DNA. It's housed in cells and is basically the blueprint for building the body. And every individual in the world has different DNA. However, organisms of very similar DNA are grouped together into species. The number of differences between species creates a tree. This seems like the most efficient way to build a tree, going straight to the source of variation between species. But again, it's a little more complicated. Genes vary in the rate of mutation or change based on their function. Some genes aren't expressed or used by the body to make proteins. It's kind of like spam email. You don't ever check it, it kind of just piles up over time. So, mutations will accumulate over time without any consequence. Genes that code for proteins, however, are used constantly, and some are linked to essential functions. So, any alterations that affect them will affect the organism, usually in a bad way. So these are under strong pressure to not change. So depending on the genes you look at, Two distantly related species may be more closely related to each other than in reality. This diversity and complexity behind even just a few species may seem overwhelming, but it really is cool to take ideas that seem so obvious and turn them on their head. And that's what science is all about.